Let's move over to the NFC Championship game, and that is at 5.30 p.m. Central Time on Fox. The 49ers head to SoFi Stadium to take on the Rams. The Rams are a a three-and-a-half-point favorite, juiced at even money. If you want to take the favorite, if you want to take the 49ers, uh, that would be minus 120. So you were giving up quite a bit of juice there. Total is 46-and-a-half on this one, Chris. And... You know, 49ers beat them twice this season, uh, 31 to 10 back in week, what, 10, I believe? And then in week 18, the 49ers beat them in LA in overtime, 27 24. And I, let, let's go through some of the matchups here. EPA per play, 49ers offense is number nine, Rams defense six. Uh, drop back EPA, number eight for the 49ers offense, number six for the Rams defense. And rushing EPA, 49ers number nine. Rams defense is number 10. On the opposite side, the Rams offense, number 7 in EPA per play. The 49ers defense is actually number 12. Uh, The Rams drop back EPA, number 3 in the National Football League. The 49ers defense is only number 19 against the pass. And on the other side, the Rams offense, number 27 in rushing EPA. They were not able to run the ball hardly at all this season. And with that, uh, the 49ers defense is number 3 in rushing EPA, it's a bit of a mismatch because the Rams are not going to be able to run the football in this game, which I think is what has happened in the earlier two games. The 49ers can focus on that passing attack and finding ways to disrupt it. This The number to me should be closer to two here, so I am certainly going to ride with the 49ers at, at plus three and a half. It just seems like too much, and, and even with the juice, I think it's yep. the better bet. But I... I I worry about this because obviously the Rams are so incredibly talented. You and I have talked about this. So give me your thoughts here. I, you know, I'm going to ride with the 49ers. I think they can win the game outright. I mean, they've already done it twice. I, I think this is going to be a tight ball game. I think it's going to be a tight ball game. I think it's going to be a lower scoring ball game, uh, as all good 49er games are. Uh, and and I think we got really good staff for last week because. They just couldn't get pressure on him. The Bucks couldn't. I don't think the board is going to have a problem getting pressure on Stafford. I think we're going to have a tough Stafford game. Um, I would take the 49ers as well and give you the pick now. Um, I, this is this is just a classic case of a team of superstars coming together trying to win a championship real quick. And, it, you know, that shit works in, in baseball in uh, basketball. It, it, it rarely works in foot, uh, football or baseball. And, you know, got a lot of stars. They got a lot of fanfare. But um, right now, L.A. is trying desperately to keep 49er fans from buying up tickets. And 49er <laughs> fans are putting out a, a, um, a like a publicity of red out L.A. And they are going to fill the stadium with 49er fans. And you know what? I, I think we're going to get at best, best case scenario for the Rams, we're going to get 50 tickets. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Uh, I mean, they did this in Week 18. Now, obviously, the Rams already had uh, their playoffs. That was a regular season up. game, and this, that, another. So, you've yeah. got to assume that the Rams are going to have fans that show up for a playoff game. But how many people live in L.A. that grew up 49er fans, that grew up Montana fans, that True. all are adults now in the prime of their life and have disposable income to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars, maybe thousands of dollars in L.A.? to try to go to a football game, a playoff game. Well, and, and you so and I, I have talked about I, I'm this. I'm like, the majority of those are 49ers fans because the majority of that age group of Rams fans, the Rams were in St. Louis their entire life. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Is so, We've talked about this. How have, many L.A. fans are actually Rams fans? You have to be a child of the fans. 70s and the 60s to know the Rams in L.A. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, you've but got more Raiders fans. if you were a child of the fans. 80s or 90s or early 2000s, <laughs> you don't know the Rams of L.A. No, no, you you only know the Raiders. That's your thing. Yeah. L- L- LA is a Raiders well, town. But, but you also follow the other, like like I I know a lot of people that are in the LA area, grew up in the LA area. It's, you know whatever, and and there's a lot of Charger fans. There's a lot of 49ers fans. There's a lot of Raiders fans. There were almost zero Rams fans. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely, absolutely. All right, so uh, so you were taking the 49ers. I am taking the 49ers. Uh, the three and a half just seems like it might be too much. This feels like a field goal game for sure. Hopefully, it will be as good as all of the games were last week. That's what I'm hoping before for. Before we get into things. the news, yeah. Before we get into yeah. the news, I want to I want to bring up one thing that I saw today. 
and this just makes me laugh, and it makes me smile so much. Um, <laughs> Odell Beckham, in his contract, the 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 Rams owe him seven hundred fifty thousand dollars as part of his deal for this year. Okay, oh, okay, and and he negotiated. The, the, he played the majority of the season, or most of the season, yeah, in Cleveland and whatever, and they're responsible for the bulk of it and all that jazz. Anyway, seven hundred fifty k is is his salary for this year. Okay, he negotiated it all in Bitcoin, and um, as of right now, Odell Beckham this year. If he held on to all his Bitcoin as he's been paid, he uh, he's around 200k for the year. I, I know a guy that runs a pizza place here in Memphis that's going to make more than Odell. <laughs> no, I mean Odell's obviously got endorsement contracts and everything else. Oh, no, he, he'll, he'll be you on his, his salary for playing football. I got a guy that runs a pizza joint that makes know, more. That, that, uh, that that's going to make more than him. All right, okay. <laughs> and, and and like and like and some of that's because it's not just. Uh, Bitcoin is just tank and, and all that stuff, as many things have dropped. Uh, it's it's also um, to take into effect to get to that 200k he's netting is uh, is the 50.3 percent in uh, taxes that the beautiful state of California imposes. Oh yes, oh yes. That here in Memphis you don't have a state tax. Well, that's it. See, that's so, the thing. I think a lot of people don't realize when these players negotiate that their contracts be paid in Bitcoin. It first has to be paid in U.S. dollars, and then it is converted. Right. So the tax no, money has well, to come here's out. Here's the thing. Oh, oh, that's the shit part. No, no, no. That's right. He's being taxed for the whole seven fifty. Oh yeah. He's yeah. not being taxed on the for whatever it is. If it was just Bitcoin, no. Damn, I didn't think of that. Oh yeah, no. That's. I mean, it has to first be because it's you know. It might be less than two hundred k then. I, it literally might be. It literally might be because it, he's being taxed for that whole seven fifty. It's uh, he's, he's taxed. He's taxed on the whole seven fifty. This crypto I stuff. I forgot man. it. Oh, so that's the math I didn't do. Anyway, I, yeah, look, <laughs> Odell's a great player. He's also a goofball, and I, this is just one of those things that I just thought was funny. I saw it and I thought it was funny, and I thought, man, you know, everybody thinks hey. they can find a way to get ahead of the system. You know, well, nobody's getting away. Listen. Remember, I, I went on the rant about being an anarchist a while back. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You you start taxing people at fifty percent of, of of my labor, ooh, brother, bro, ooh, you you better bring a big stick to come get that check. Okay, <laughs> I'm just telling you. I love it. I love it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.